Hey biologist, Mr. Fought here. Today we're going to be talking about the properties of nucleic acids. First up are the must-knows. DNA and RNA, these are two different molecules that have structural similarities but also some differences. These differences are going to be related to the differences within their functions as well. Also, both DNA and RNA are made up of three components, sugar, phosphate group, and a nitrogenous base. Let's get into it. First up is a good diagram representing the differences between our DNA versus our RNA. So let's focus on DNA on the left hand side. The first thing you may notice is the stereotypical type of double helical structure. And so this is very reminiscent of the DNA structure itself. Again, a double helix or double stranded in this case. We can also see some key difference between DNA and RNA is that DNA has the sugar called deoxyribose. Recall that we know it's a sugar because it ends in ose. O-S-E ending means sugar. This one is deoxygenated. If we're to compare this to the RNA sugar, ribose, again, another sugar, O-S-E, we can see a subtle difference down at the bottom of that, uh, that pentose sugar, the five carbon sugar, is that one of them, the ribose, is going to have the OH group, the hydroxide, versus the deoxyribose is lacking that oxygen. Thus, it gets the title deoxy, meaning deoxygenated. We remove the oxygen within the deoxyribose structure. Continuing on down, we have our, our nitrogenous bases. Uh, there's going to be some subtle differences you may recall. So within DNA, we have thymine is going to be one, represented by the lowercase, or the capital letter T. And on the RNA side, we have uracil, represented by the capital U. They are going to share some commonalities in that they're all going to have cysteine, guanine, and adenine represented by C, G, and A, respectively. Now in the RNA structure, there's one more thing I do want to mention, that comparatively, that the RNA structure has a single strand versus the DNA is double strand. Easy way to remember this is that the D stands for double. Well, not really. It stands for deoxyribo part, but we can kind of think of it in our head. D, double stranded for DNA. Next up, let's talk about the individual monomers. So the uh, individual unit or the single unit monomer of DNA slash RNA are referred to as nucleotides. These nucleotides are composed of three pieces. We have a sugar, which can be either deoxyribose in DNA or ribose in RNA. We have a phosphate group represented by PO4, much like in our chemistry. We remember phosphate groups as one of our polyatomic ions. And we also have nitrogenous bases. Those are the letters, guanine, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and uracil, depending on if you're talking about DNA or RNA. Next up, we have, a, we have another set of classifications um, within each of these nitrogenous bases. So we have purines and we also have what are called pyrimidines. So notice if you were to observe very quickly that the purines are going to have two of these ring-like structures versus these pyrimidines are going to have a single ring-like structure. So structurally, this is a difference. This also does play into, as we'll see on the next slide, the hydrogen bonding in which the DNA or RNA molecules are going to be bound to other things. So as promised, here it is. We can see at the right hand side indicated within this, we have the dashed lines representing hydrogen bonding. Notice how we have a purine is going to be hydrogen bonded to a pyrimidine in both instances. This is why we need to talk about the differences between those and how those differences play into the structure and how they can functionally uh, bond to one another or change the function because of that structure. So we're always going to have a purine is going to be hydrogen bonded to a pyrimidine in this sense. So guanine and cytosine must match up for this reason, just like thymine and adenine, again, must match up for this reason. Now think for your second, is this DNA or RNA? The answer is DNA. You can see that it has thymine, that's the giveaway. Now, if we were to swap that thymine out for uracil, then yes, then it would be considered RNA. And much like our thymine, our uracil is also going to be our pyrimidine. It's going to have a single ring-like structure. Now on the left hand side, there's one more thing I do want to point out. You'll see a five with a little apostrophe. That's called a prime symbol in the biological sense. So this DNA structure and RNA structure, what they have is what's called different directionality to them. And that they're going to have a three prime end and a five prime end. Now 
if you trace your kind of finger along the path, you'll see at the top, let's use the left hand side, if we start with the three prime, trace our finger all the way down, then we're going to end on the five prime on the bottom. Now, if we do the opposite side, if we start at the top at the five prime, again, trace your finger all the way down the double helical open staircase and get all the way to the bottom, you're going to end on the three prime note. So this is always going to be in this, in this fashion for that each of the sides, there's going to be a three prime end and a five prime end. This is going to come into play more so when we talk about DNA replication as well as protein synthesis. For now, we'll just leave it as this. This is in part what also attributes to the property of that DNA has what's called anti-parallel and that they're going to be parallel to one another side by side, but also they're anti, which means they're opposite. So we have the three prime and five prime ends. Thank you all for watching. Please let me know if you have any additional questions.